Hello everyone, so in this video let us talk about the second problem from the latest Code Forces Code Torn Round 2. The problem name is Luke is a foodie. So Luki likes to eat food. There are n piles of food aligned in a straight line in front of him and the ith pile consists of ei unit of food. Right. Now Luke will walk along from the first pile to the nth pile one by one and he wants to eat every pile of food while walking through the food pile each like food line what you can say that when Luke reaches the ith pile what he'll do he can eat the pile only and only if v minus a of i is less than equal to x this is one expression so what is v what is ai x so ai is the ith pile unit like what is the ith pile uh, value of food in there x is a fixed integer that will be given you as an input and v of i is the food affinity so like you can see that food capacity of luke Okay, so there is some food capacity of Luke. If you subtract it from E of I, you will do a mod of it. If it is less than equal to X that is given to you, the answer is fine. Luke can eat that. Now, what the problem is that Luke will move along one by one throughout this whole sequence of piles and he will eat every food. Now, what you can do is that uh, like he can set V to any integer, like the affinity of like Luke, he can change V to any of the integer he wants. But what you can, what you, what he actually wants is that he wants to minimize the number of changes. So you can initialize V with any number, okay? And then while loops move around the piles, he can change V also. But you have to minimize. You have to choose V of like a very optimal way so that while moving around the piles, he have to like minimum amount of V that need to be changed. That's the whole problem. How much now amount of V he needs to be changing? That's the answer. Whenever I see any expression in problems, I'll try to open this expression out and then I'll try to find some answer. As you can see that I know the value of a of i at every point. I know the value of x. So why not I not like I have to find out the value of v. What is the affinity? So I can find out the range of v for uh what you can say for Luke for Luke. So let us open this expression out and then try to come up with some solution. So I always try to open out this expression whichever I got. So v minus a of i mod less than equal to x. Open it out. So it will lead down to whenever I see more, it will open into positive or negative expression. So it will be v minus a of i less than x and minus v plus a of i is then equal to x. So because I want the range of v, v will be less than equal to a of i plus x and v will be greater than equal to if I just take this here, if I bring it here, so a of i minus x. So what it actually means is that there is some let's say value for v like for which v is fine because there is some affinity range so I can take any value okay so let's say if a of i is let's say 5 and I want it to be 2 so which I can if I just put it out so uh, so v should be less than equal to 7 and v is greater than equal to 3 okay so if v is less than like greater than equal to 3 for every value of v like greater than equal to 3 so 3 4 5 6 and get less than equal to 7 so 7 for all of these values for all of the value of v's like like any like any value of v it is fine that i will eat the ith pile i hope you get the point so if any value of v is there i will i will eat the ith pile of food so this range is better for us okay so what i'll do is that i will keep storing out this ranges because like instead of taking out any value in this range but it's better to take out the whole range. I will iterate over every a of i element. So I have some element that is a1, a2, a3 and so on till an. And what I'll do is for every a of i, when I know a of i, I know x, I can get the range for which there is a valid v. Like there's a valid affinity value that if it considered, then I will get an answer. So let's say that the valid infinity range for like vanity, like the affinity range is 3 to 7. That if I get to 3 to 7, then I can eat this pile. Okay. Like V value anything because V value can be anything between this range. If anything between this range is taken, then the answer is fine. Now let's say that the V value for this range is let's say 10 to 13. Now this will cause a change because if I have a V value from 3 to 7, now if I want to go to a V value of 3, like 10 to 13, then I have to change my V value. From this point to this point. Now my v value will change from this point and total number of changes will be 1. I have changed my new range to 10 to 30. Now let's say my range goes to in A3 goes to 12 to 
13 like 12 to 14 now one range is from 10 to 13 other range is from 12 to 14 so there might be an intersection of it if i take v between this intersection so if i take v between 12 to 13 then that is also fine I can, if I take a V value between 12 to 13, then this will be all satisfied. This will also be satisfied because 12 to 13 V will also be satisfying this condition and this condition. So what I'm trying to say is that I will not take a definite V, but I will take the ranges of every V for every A of I condition and then try to satisfy that whether both of, if both of them have some intersection, I will take the intersection and move forward. If there's no intersection, which means that I have to completely change my V because both of them are complete V's complete like set of V's so I have to change one V from another to like to like eat the another pile because for eating the another pile I have, my V should be in the another range I have I have another range V so I have to change from one range to another hope you get the point and if I have two intersections then I will I'll find out intersection let's say my in initial V was from let's say 10 to 13 and my new V is from let's say 12 to 15 the intersection will be this so the old ranges so one range is from 10 to 13 the other is 12 to 15 so the leftmost of both the ranges i have to find the maximum of both them max of let's say l1 comma l2 okay and whatever is the right part of it and i have to find the minimum of r2 like r1 comma r2 that will be the new range Moving forward, that V will be the new range. And I will just check that whether taking this range, I can feed the I can eat the next pile. If I can eat the next pile, that's good. If I cannot need eat the next pile, I have to change my range. Either I have to change the range, or maybe the next range is also having this like intersection with this range. So I will shorten my range and I will keep on updating my V such that I will try to eat all the pile. But that's the overall logic for this problem. Let us move on to the code part now. So what we have tried to do here is that we have taken L to R, the smallest I can get is zero, but I have taken negative one and the maximum I can get is all the sum. So I enter 10 to 1, 9 plus 5. So it's a very large number. Then uh, what I'll do is that iterate over all, like take every element A and just check that whether, so let's say my range is L to R. If the range, like the new range that is A plus X, so if it is not having an intersection, I can check that if A of X is less than R, and if a, a minus x is greater than r, so which means that either it is on the left hand side or right hand side, like my range, then it is forming an altogether new range. So I have to find out a new range, so total will increment. And now I will move, move to the new range, so new range is this, so L is like a minus x and r is a plus x. So I have a minus x and a minus x, like a minus x and a plus x, the new ranges. Okay. If they doesn't have the new range, I will have to find out the intersection. If the intersection means mean that what is the new range? My left will become the maximum, which I've told you of the leftmost part. So L and A minus X. So this is the left. So this is left. So A minus X and uh, left and the right one is right and A, A plus X, whatever is them. So that's the overall logic. Nothing much. This is just a for loop over that. So O of N is the total time mix it problem as well. And it just return the total that what is the number of steps that I've done to change out the complete range. That's all our logic and the code part for the second problem as well. If you still have notes, you can mention it in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you in the next one. Let's keep coding and bye.